Oh good, you're here. Sorry y'all, this footage was damaged and I couldn't refilm it, so we're gonna do the opening a little differently today. Happy Halloween! What a magical time of year. Herelius Bones, back again with another addition to the Herelius Harvest. I would like to welcome the new and returning subscribers. It's wonderful to have you here. If you haven't subscribed yet, perhaps today's the day? This time we're revisiting an old favorite, The Nightmare Before Christmas. There are so many characters, we'll have subjects for years to come. This time around, we're paying homage to those three scoundrels, Lock, Shock, and Barrel. Do you consider The Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie? A Christmas movie? Or both? Let me know down in the comments. I would consider it both, but I'll watch it any time of year. I love the character design so much. I've been having a blast with this series. Let's get to it. At this point, I've accepted that I have a pumpkin addiction. These are pumpkins that I ordered from a crafting website. They came in an assortment bundle of 12 for like $20 or something like that. I regret nothing. It's a lovely red. In hindsight, I should not have mixed the paint on this paper thing. It absorbed a lot of the moisture. If you work a lot with paint, get yourself a palette knife. They work so much better than mixing with the brush or a popsicle stick. I really like this color too. <gasps> we have a guest appearance from the little lion man. Does that need explanation? Our apartment only has one window. I like to sit next to the window while I work, and our bed is right next to the window because that's the only place that it fits downstairs in the apartment. So I've been recording and doing my work in bed. It helps me be productive through the depression. And to make a long story short, <laughs> Lion likes to sleep under the blankets while I work. I just like these colors a lot. I apologize for the picture quality. Sometimes it's really crisp and sometimes it is not. I'm not sure if it's the camera or if I have too much light on my painting area. I'm not sure what's happening because sometimes it's fine. Adding some shading and highlights to these beautiful pumpkins. Now I'm coating them with a gloss varnish. Liquitex gloss varnish, I believe. I don't know how much this actually preserves the paint. It says it does, but I have my doubts. I've had projects that still chip really easily even after I seal it. You know how much glue I cover things with. It was super convenient to use the hole for the stem with the backside of a paintbrush so I could seal the whole thing at once.
so shiny and pumpkin-y. I love pumpkins. Fake pumpkins and real pumpkins. I like them on the porch, and I like them in a cornucopia. I do not like to eat them, unless they're made into soup. I love what pumpkins represent. Fall, Halloween, cooler weather, comfy clothes. I've been a night owl all my life and the nights get longer. All the colors and smells of fall. I love it all. That's what pumpkins represent for me. I think that's why they make me so happy to work with them as... I don't know if I would actually call them a medium, but as a base for these strange tributes that I've been making. The purple and green pumpkin represents shock. The light purple and light blue pumpkin represents barrel. And the red and blue pumpkin is to represent lock. I'm using Sculpey to make the masks of Lock, Shock, and Barrel. This one is Barrel. I used a can of peaches, I want to say, for a template for his Halloween mask. Just kind of smoothing and patting. I don't know why that transition was necessary, but it looked okay, so I'm fine with it. Now I'm carving Beryl's eyes out. I know I didn't get the characters completely correct. This is an interpretation, not a replication. But my point is, I didn't realize how close Beryl's mask was to Jack's face. Is that a stupid statement? No, because they're both skeletons. That was probably a stupid statement. Maybe. Oh well. But I mean literally the same. Almost the same face. I never really put that together and I'm not sure why. Is it a reference to Jack? Does Beryl look up to Jack more so than the others do? They all have a history that hasn't been explained. And I'm not sure I want anyone to try. I apologize once again for the lighting. I'm still figuring out this new space. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm not sure why I was using a razor blade as a sculpting tool. Possibly the path of least resistance. If the clay is cut as cleanly as you can make it, you don't have to smooth as much. I think this one is my favorite mask. It was the first one I sculpted, and it's my favorite. But I am pleased with how they all turned out. I have favorite elements with each of these pumpkins, which you can't always say! So I think that means I did pretty well. Now I'm working on Shock's mask. I wrapped the pumpkins in plastic because I didn't want the Sculpey to damage the paint. I don't know if it would, and like I said, I did seal it. So theoretically it shouldn't, but it was a risk I was not willing to take. What's your favorite song from The Nightmare Before Christmas? For me, I think it honestly depends on my mood. Because I like Sally's song, and I like Jack's song after he crashes, but they're, they're kind of sad. There are some fun ones in there too like kidnapping Sandy Claus. Actually, you know what? 
I think that one is my favorite, but the corn version, not the original. We got there in the end. We figured it out. I hadn't really studied these masks that closely until I had to sculpt them. I didn't realize her frowny face was so frowny. She looks so sad. Such a sad mask. I guess I kind of registered that the mouth was there subconsciously. But consciously, I never realized how sad the witch was. Why is the witch so sad? So sad. For time's sake, I did Locke's mask off screen. So I'm still working out how long to leave Sculpey in for. I swear I only leave it in for 15 minutes. It says 15 minutes, I leave it in for 15 minutes, and it's burnt to a crisp. This time he was only slightly singed, so you know. And I was gonna paint him anyway, so it doesn't matter. Still! I see all these other YouTubers using Sculpey, and there's... Always comes out of the oven in beautiful condition. Mine is charcoal. And I'm just like, how did you do that? And their sculptures are all different thicknesses in various areas of the same sculpture. And they still don't burn. Ace of clay. How do you not burn? I mean, okay. I know you said you covered the heating element in your oven with tin foil, and I did that and it helped a little bit, but I still burned the bejesus out of everything. I'm not calling you out, man. I just need to watch more of your videos so I can learn your ways. But again, it doesn't matter because I was painting it. I apologize too, my camera keeps going in and out of focus and I'm not sure why. Lots of things I'm figuring out in this new space. I've always thought that the witch was Beryl, because Beryl is a girl's name, but I was pleasantly surprised to discover that she is Shock. Can you see what I mean now about the frowny face mask? Locke looks like the little kid you have to watch around your pets. Locke looks like the kid that comes up with really bad ideas and gets other kids in on it. So they did a great job on his character design in those terms. I guess he is my least favorite of the three. No reason. Other than I like the design of the other two better.
I made Locke's teeth silver. I think they are gray in the movie because I like shiny things. I'm a simple individual. I gotta be honest with you. I really, really, really tried to get these masks as smooth and shaped as I possibly could because the masks from the movie are very simple and very smooth. The clay roller that I have has been a game changer in terms of getting things done more quickly. It helped a lot. What didn't help was trying to form and fit the masks to an object that was not only round but ridged. So it was a partial success, I suppose. And I like the way that they look, but they are a little lopsided. Stylistic choices. I did that on purpose. How about that? I glued the masks down with the ultimate craft glue. That's its name. It's called the ultimate. I was not sure how well this foam would work as a material to paint on. I was using acrylic paint and that flakes off of flexible surfaces, but it's what I have and I promise I'll be careful. There's an additive made that you can mix with acrylic paint to make it more flexible for painting on fabric. That probably would have helped. I was really unsure about all the elements of this particular pumpkin. Okay, I told you that to tell you this. I'm now working on Locke's hair and he was my least favorite pumpkin. I wasn't confident in my interpretation of his mask. It kind of looked just like a generic devil mask to me. But then, with the addition of the hair, I really, really like it. So it just goes to show, sometimes you just gotta keep going. Maybe it doesn't look right because it's not finished yet. I love all these pumpkins equally and for different reasons, but I was not feeling him as much until I added the hair. And now I love them all so much. I got this felt from the Dollar Tree. It's actually really thin and acts more like fabric than thicker felt does. I like it a lot. Because of the lopsided nature of Tim Burton's character designs, I was not as careful as I could have been when pinning this together. Again, I did not plan this out super well, because I, I wasn't super concerned with Listen, people are using hot glue to put things together. And I don't know if any of you have ever used hot glue to put things together, but it never holds for me. Maybe it's me. Maybe I just don't let it dry. Maybe I move it too soon. Maybe I'm impatient with the glue. The only thing that I've noticed that it will keep together, but it melts it, so you have to be careful is styrofoam. In my experience, if you glue foam with hot glue, the foam will break before the hot glue does. But you have to use the low heat setting or it will melt the foam away. That's my opinion. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying I have never been able to get hot glue to have a good hold for me. But I keep trying. With the hot glue, I keep trying. Because I see it working for other people, so I feel like it might be me. Okay. So I told you all that to tell you this. I feel like hand sewn in this instance is at least more secure than hot glue. I like this stitch. This is my favorite stitch, I think. I'm not sure what it's called. Loop around? Probably something like that. Loop by. Loop by loop. That's probably it. But I like the way that it looks. And I like the impression that it gives by leaving the stitch exposed. Making sure it didn't look too big on her pumpkin. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, listen, I didn't measure things. I just sewed until I felt like it was a good place to stop. And now I'm gonna turn it inside out and cut off the excess felt so I can potentially use it for something else. I turned it right side out again. And decided it was too long. I cut out this circle for the brim. I cut tabs into the cone to help me sew it to the brim.
I'm using random objects in my art supplies to trace onto the felt for the tabs on the brim and the hole where the cone will go through. These were supposed to be simple and quick, and they were not. And I know that's partially due to my anxiety. It's also due to the fact that I cannot stop myself from going too far. <sighs> but you know, since I started these videos, and since I've been pushing myself by going too far, I have learned a lot, and I can see the improvement that I'm making. And that makes me very happy. Now I am pinning the tabs together. This hat is pretty well put together in my opinion. But when I cut out the tabs on each piece, I wasn't paying attention to how many tabs I cut, so they didn't line up exactly, but I made it work. That was a really long-winded way to say I made it work. That I did it wrong, but I made it work. I'm not gonna subject you to another montage of me sewing, especially when I'm struggling this much with the first stitch. I know that Shock's hat is purple. I don't have any purple fabric and I don't have any money to buy purple fabric, so I'm gonna paint some black fabric purple. Now, I made a lot of decisions when I did this that I didn't realize I was making, but it's fine. I didn't realize that this orange colored piece of foam that I used for Locke's hair was so vibrant on camera. I was using it as a mat so I didn't get paint all over my desk. I can still use this piece for another project. That being said, it is very vibrant and I apologize if your corneas are burning. I mixed a light color purple acrylic. I was gonna try to dry brush the paint onto the felt, but it wasn't turning sufficiently purple. So I kept adding more and more paint. It was kind of nice because as I was pushing down to get more paint into the fabric, the back of the hat, which was still wet, was pressing paint out against the foam. And that action evened the color out significantly. It was like using a beauty blender. I have two different sizes of pokey things I got from Dollar Tree in the craft section. I'm using them to gauge these holes up so I don't damage the paint when I poke a hole through it. I start out with a really small pin sized point to make the hole and then gauge it up with a bigger one so the wire will fit. Then I put some ultimate glue on the wire and place it in the hole for Shock's hair. I was trying to make sure I didn't overdo it with too many strands because her hair is pretty thin in the movie and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. I twisted three pipe cleaners together and made a little insert for Shock's hat so that I could position it in different ways. I realize now that Shock's hat sticks straight up and I ended up bending this one over. It was due to me not double checking the original design, but I like how my hat looks. Honestly, it kind of looks like the sorting hat a little bit. I really like the texture of the felt with the paint. It reminds me of old, dusty, or cobwebby fabric. I'm always looking for different techniques to create new textures. I'm cutting a hole for the stem. I didn't want to cover the stem because I feel like in past harvests, and really to come in this one, I have obscured the fact that these are pumpkins, and I want to preserve the fact that they're pumpkins because that makes it make more sense. Honestly, you can't tell what Santa even is anymore, but that's okay. Don't you come after me for going on a rant about hot glue and then calling me out and saying I'm using hot glue right now. I'm using hot glue right now because the stem is also helping keep the hat in place. If it was just the glue, I would have used something else. So I thought I had footage of this, but I can't find it. I crocheted a small circle squarish thing with this yarn and affixed it to the top of Beryl's head with the ultimate. I was going to try to do his hair with clay because it's kind of slicked back in rows, but I couldn't make it look right with the stem coming through it. The only bad thing about these guys is that they're top heavy or forward heavy perhaps? I was thinking, I have these small metal pegs that I could insert in the rear of the pumpkins. 
Am I right? <laughs> to help weigh it down, but I don't know if it would be enough. Or... I could just always put them on an incline. Probably the second thing. Path of least resistance. Aren't they wonderful? I'm so pleased. What a wonderful addition to the Herelius harvest. Well, what do you think? Worthy of Lock, Shock, and Barrel? I think they're adorable. And I'm very pleased to have them as an addition to the pumpkin army. Honestly, I think they came out better than how I pictured it. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. If you have a suggestion for me, let me know that also. That's all for today, my friends. Take care, and I'll see you next time.